What if you could travel back in time to UTEP's original campus and experience what it would be like to be a student in 1914? Or what if you could directly interact and make decisions in situations that you would encounter in your professional life long before you graduated from college? Some might be thinking of Star Trek's holodeck, and, really, you wouldn't be too far off. Today on Inside AT, immersive teaching and learning environments. Hi, welcome to Inside AT. I'm your host, Randy. And uh, today we're going to talk about something that's pretty interesting. You've noticed a lot of immersive environments around the campus. And you can see that both on the lab setting and also in an actual space where you go into a different setting and you can do a simulation of, let's say, a medical procedure. And you can do that to educate and also explore different possibilities, sometimes even without actually going outside. Which, speaking of which, I haven't been outside in a while, so I should probably go and get some sunlight. I'll be right back. Look at all this construction on campus. <laughs> this man. Outside. I'll show you outside. This is awesome. Ah. Uh... If you ever played Farmville, Minecraft, or Club Penguin, you were in an immersive environment. Innovative teachers are using these games to help students understand concepts related to writing, geometry, and even history. Janet Hill is an instructional technologist at the University of Texas at El Paso in the Academic Technologies Department. Through her innovative work designing and developing virtual worlds and 3D interactions, she has transformed how faculty and students engage and participate in online environments. But what are virtual worlds? They are a digital mixture of auditory, social, and visual experiences. A person creates an avatar to represent themselves and uses it to explore a world filled with interactive objects, music, and video. Avatars can talk to other avatars from around the world, all while inhabiting a virtual space. But the best way to truly understand a virtual world is to experience one. So this is Janet Hill. Hi. Hey, Janet. Hi, Randy. So what is an immersive environment? Uh, well, an immersive environment is one that you can be placed into and feel like you've been transformed into a different place or time or experience. Um, a good example might be a living history museum or role plays. Uh, video games can also be an immersive environment and, or even a movie can be immersive if it's engaging enough. Cool, okay, and, and what is a virtual world then? So a virtual world is, is what we're in right now actually. It's a digital immersive environment that you can access through your computer. Uh, you can access the world with other people who go into the world as avatars, um, which are digital representations of themselves. In a virtual world, a person can interact with objects, but um, they can also act, interact with each other through chat and even voice, like that's what we're doing right now. Um, mm -hmm. cool. And it kind of like Skype, right? And what makes Second Life unique is that people not only have the ability to communicate through their avatars, uh -huh. but they can create the worlds for themselves. Everything that you see here was created by me or by a student assistant. And uh, everything you see in Second Life is created by another user, and they're not necessarily designers or trained in 3D animation or, uh, or 3D modeling. So it makes it for a highly collaborative and creative space. Wow, so this is pretty cool, Janet. So in this case, how is YouTube using virtual worlds? 
we have simulations, like we have Epi Island, um, and that's a sim here in Second Life where students can practice data gathering in a simulated Mexican colonia, and then they can analyze the data. Um, and it allows them to practice skills that they will then take into the real world um, in a place where they can make mistakes and discover techniques for data gathering on their own and it's not going to affect any real data. And we also use virtual worlds for outreach uh, to the general public. So we share uh, student films that are created by the first year composition students. And we also host an exhibit that's curated and created by the Smithsonian about Latino culture. So now that we have this and that type of technology being used, what do you think the future of virtual technology would be? Or, or how do you see it being used in the classroom in the future or the classroom of the future? Well, virtual world technology has been around for about 20 years and Second Life received a lot of hype, you know, seven, eight years ago. And that hype died down because the technology wasn't quite where it, it needed to be to be user friendly. Uh, young students uh, were asked, how, how, did, how do you think that you can use this? And their answer was that uh, they, they wanted to use it for education. They thought it would be a great learning tool that they could go in to a world, a virtual world, and that they can interact with it and discover within that world. And that was coming from students, young students, you know, that are 10 and 12 years old. And those are our students of the future, and that's what they're going to expect from us as educators. Well, this is certainly very interesting, Janet. So let me ask you another weird question. Let's say that I wanted to get a perm on my virtual world, or I don't know, maybe, I, I, I don't know, like uh, blonde hair or something. I mean, not, not, nothing weird, you know? Or, or what, what if I wanted to be like a monster or a werewolf? How could I do that? Uh, well, um, it's quite easy. It's just a matter of taking something from your files and dragging and dropping them onto your avatar or, um, or changing your avatar in some way. So one of the nice things about this, about this environment is that you can explore your identity. You know, um, it's not all about your, your physical looks, although it can be about how you feel inside. Maybe you feel like you're, a, like you're a fairy or maybe you want to explore gender roles. Maybe you want to be a woman and see what it's like to be a woman and be treated like a woman. You know, Randy, I, I can hook you up there uh, well, if you like. It's, I mean, it, it's more of a friend asked me stuff uh -huh. about that. Yeah. Not that, well, um, um. <laughs> so this was a very enlightening conversation. Uh -huh. Thank you, Janet. Well, thank, thank you, Randy. Um, I appreciate you uh, dropping into my, uh, my version of 1920s UTEP and taking a look. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay out of that construction. While Randy explores his identity, let's talk to a group of people working on an exciting project bringing virtual worlds and Latino culture together. Melissa Carrillo is the Director of New Media and Technology at the Smithsonian Latino Center. Ms. Carrillo has directed and designed interactive and immersive online experiences for the SLC for 13 years. Joining Melissa Carrillo is artist and musician Stacy Fox. She is the lead artist for the Smithsonian Latino Virtual Museum and transdisciplinary artist in residence for the School of Journalism and the Media Sandbox at Michigan State University. So the, the thing about LVM, so the Latino Virtual Museum, what, what's interesting is that it's, it's not about just uh, hands-on things or places. LVM is about life. And so we try to um, create an experience that reaches people across multiple platforms because not everyone experiences life the same way. What really drew audiences and what, what we were able to do was experiment with, you know, innovative ways of audience engagement. And, and we used the concept of a town square, a placita, um, as the, the hub for engagement. And um, just like in real life, like Stacy said, I mean, people, you know, this is, this is about real life. I mean, there, there's, there were elements of reality that we were able to bring into the virtual that people really resonated with. So we know what an immersive environment is, 
but how can one be applied in the classroom? Let's talk with Dr. Meredith Abarca from the English department. Dr. Abarca used the Day of the Dead Placida, designed by Melissa and Stacy, as a tool to engage her Mexican-American folklore class. It has a future, a productive future in, in, in learning, because it does provide another setting of communicating. You know, this, this trying these identities in terms of second life, and, and experiencing your your life in a different manner. Um, if you can befriend, you know, these avatars or these people with from different ethnic backgrounds from different parts of the world, and and be comfortable with them in second life. And if you might not potentially be in the first life, maybe eventually you could. But immersive environments aren't just virtual. They can also be physical locations where skills are taught tested and perfected in a low risk setting. And that's exactly what they've got set up here at the Health Sciences and Nursing Building. Let's go take a look. Located at UTEP School of Nursing, the Sim Lab is a center for simulation. Using the latest in technology, they immerse future nursing and healthcare professionals into realistic hospital and home care settings. The Sim Lab is a place where the students are able to come and practice all their skills, from everything from communication to critical reasoning to even starting IVs and Foley's. This is a safe place for them to practice their skills before they go out to the real world and work on real patients. Okay, your experience over here is pretty much to practice our skills before we go to the to a, to a work field, so we can get confidence and per perform better when we get out of it. We, we have a lot of high fidelity mannequins ranging from twenty to $65,000. Those mannequins are able to talk, they have pulses, their chest rise and fall, they, they have good and bad heart sounds. This gives the students an opportunity to assess on a mannequin to see, hear what, what a weird lung sound would be or what a weird heart sound would be before they actually go and experience it on real patients. Uh, I think this is a unique experience because it's the most closer to the real life, to the hospital setting. So I truly believe that this helps us a lot to learn and be confident more than anything on us so we can practice safely. I guess one thing we'd want our, our, our partners to know is the key, the beauty of simulation is what we really say, what we really say is get your hands dirty. We want the students to practice. We, want, we don't want them against the wall and saying, hey, I'm not going to do it, you do it. We want the students to get their hands involved and see how the, how the skills are working and the tools are used and stuff like that. So we believe in, in hands-on approach to everything that we do. So there you have it. Immersive environments are essential tools for in-depth teaching and learning. And as evidence, an immersive environment can be anything from simulation labs to virtual worlds and even simply video games that you may play yourself. I'm your host Randy and this has been Inside AT. I'll see you next time.